Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be talking about the Z9 and the Z9 buffer. There's a lot of confusion online around that um, and I just want to make sure that everything's nice and clear. I'm going to talk you through all the different options, the file formats, different memory cards and so on. First of all, I would just really like to say thank you so much for all the support and the comments, the likes and everything that I got on my first Z9 video. If you've not watched that already, lots of people like it. Um, so please do, if you haven't watched that, I might put a link for it up here or something. Um, but in today's video, we're gonna be talking about buffer rates because that is the biggest question I continually got. I've looked at all the comments. I've not replied to all of them yet. I will make my way through them as I can. But the biggest comment that kept coming through and coming through and coming through was around buffer rates. And I appreciate that there's some confusion out there as to what is going on with the buffer and what's going on with the different options that you have in the Z9. So I'm gonna switch positions. I'm gonna set my camera up behind my Z9 give you a wide enough view so you can see what cards I'm putting in the card slot, and then obviously show you what's happening on the back of this camera screen as well. And hopefully, as I'm talking you through those different processes, it really irons out all the confusion. So let's jump over to the back of the camera. Obviously, please do keep in mind that before we jump into this as well, this is still pre-production, but I wanna try and explain to you guys what, what people were getting confused about. Okay, so um, I've got my Z9 here, as you can see. Um, the Z9 has got a 50 millimeter 1.2 on the front of it, as you can see that I'm at 1.2. Um, I'm then recording that on a Z6 II with a 50 millimeter macro. So hopefully the setup makes sense. In front of my Z9, I've then also got a, a color checker. So just to obviously be work as my subject. The biggest thing that a lot of people get confused about was this 30 frames buffer size like you take 30 shots and then your buffer fills so I get it I can figure out where that comes from and what might cause that situation to happen so that generally revolves around using an XQD card so if I was to use an XQD card say a 64 gig version here this has got a write speed of 400 megabytes now that's the important bit I'm never really interested in read speeds and a lot of memory cards do just put their read speeds on them. Some cards don't put their write speeds on them. What's also really important is your consistent write speed as well because there's a lot of cards that might have a peak of a write speed and then over time that write speed will drop down and that can make a huge difference for continuous shooting when it comes to the buffer that you're shooting with. Just to give you guys an idea, let's just jump into the photo shooting menu and show you that I'm in raw. So I'm just doing just raw. I'm not doing raw JPEG or anything like that. I'm just doing a raw file. My image size is large. I can't change that because you can only change the image size when it comes to JPEGs. And my raw recording is set to lossless. I'm not in high efficiency and I'm not in the high efficiency star. So I'm gonna press okay on lossless. Just double check, we are in lossless. I'm not gonna change that until I tell you. Um, I'm not doing anything with slot two. This is just a one card in slot one and everything else should be good. So let's just jump back out of there. Now let's just pop in my XQD card. So just so you guys are clear, 64 gig XQD goes in the slot, close the door. Um, just go and format that just to be double safe. So I'm just gonna format that card, slot one, yes. There we go, okay. So let's go back to shooting. So when I half press the shutter, um, I, you can see that it says a remaining of 20 frames. That just shows you how many frames your camera has left in your buffer. I'm just gonna increase my shutter speed here. Okay, so I've got a couple of extra frames there, but if we look at that, that clearly says 33 frames. So even if we downscale that down to 30, this is where this number comes from. If you're using an XQD card, if you're shooting lossless compressed and you're shooting at 20 frames per second, this is where that 30 frames comes from. How do we change that? So then let's say let's change the quality of the raw file. So let's go back into our photo shooting menu. I go to, instead of lossless compressed, which we've been on ever since I turned it to lossless compressed, I'm now gonna change that back to high efficiency with a star. Let's format again. There we go. Okay, a couple of frames over, but we get 52. So high efficiency, 20 frames per second, we get 52 shots. If I go to high efficiency, just format the card again. Okay. 
and we're done. 82. So if you're using this camera with an XQD card, even in high efficiency, this comes back to what I said in my first video around using this camera with XQD cards isn't going to give you what you expect. Okay. So let's have a look at some CF Express cards. I also just want to explain that not all CF Express cards are the same. Because I've got two CF Express cards. So I've got a Delkin black card and I've got a Lexar Professional Gold card as well. So this gold Lexar Professional CF Express card, it does have its read speed written on it at 1750, but it does not have its write speed written on it. Now, from what I can find online, these have a write of about a thousand megabytes as a peak. So let's try this Lexar card next. So I'm going to pop that in the slot. Let's just make sure that's formatted. There we go. And then let's just reset all of our other settings. So I'm going to go back to my photo shooting menu. I'm in RAW and my RAW quality is going to go back to lossless. So I'm in lossless compressed. I'm at 20 frames per second. We're good to go. So this is CF Express Lexar. We get 61 frames. So versus XQD, XQD was giving us 30 to 33 frames. CF Express Lexar was giving us 61 frames. If we do that again, let's go for another format. Sixty two that time, but I obviously had a little bit of extra frames there after the buffer hit the end of the buffer. So we're getting a consistent sixty to sixty two frames, right? So we've gone from thirty to sixty already just by going to a medium speed CF Express card at twenty frames per second. So if I now change that to high efficiency with a star and format. There we go. Hundred eighty two. Couple of frames over, but generally in the ballpark of a hundred and seventy to hundred and eighty frames. If I then change that to high efficiency. I'm not really going to show you this because it's a bit pointless. I don't really want to waste your time, but it will just keep shooting. So this is the fastest card that I've been able to find. And this is the card that I will be using to in my Z9. I've got multiples of them. I bought quite a few. <laughs> I bought quite a few when I realized how good these are. So these are the cards that I'll be using. I'm going to put in our Delkin Black. Door shut, camera on, just do a format. There we go. So let's just make sure that we are in lossless. So lossless compressed, image quality raw, we're good to go. 20 frames per second, here we go. Okay, so I've got a couple of extra frames there, but you can see we're now up to 81. So we're still, we're lossless compressed. Delkin Black, 81 frames. A couple of extra frames maybe on top of that once we hit that buffer, but that still takes us to say 78, in the ballpark of 70, 80, right? So it's entirely up to you how you want to interpret that. But we can clearly see that not all CF Express cards are equal. We've gone from 30 60 to 80 just by swapping out the memory card all within lossless compressed. If I change that to high efficiency and I'm just going to do a format. So let's do format memory card. There we go. So if I change that to high efficiency, 
Just double check that I did that. Yeah, there we go. So high efficiency with the star. This thing's just going to shoot forever now. Okay, so we had a we had a break there, and that is one thousand one hundred and thirty-seven frames in high efficiency star with a Delkin black. Nikon's own numbers are over a thousand frames with a pro grade cobalt in high efficiency. So the Delkin Black is even getting those a thousand frames with just high efficiency star, even giving you better quality. High efficiency Delkin Black at three twentieth of a second. It's all live, still going, we're still shooting. Okay. And we're not even we're not even slowing down the buffer number here, that's just still sticking at 14. So this is what I mean, it would just do I'm just gonna stop now because it just goes forever, so that was 2000. One other thing I'd really like to highlight as well, which you may have seen, is how quickly the buffer clears. So if I show you... That's 81 shots and the buffer's just cleared. So in the time it took me to press the playback button, the buffer cleared. So 81 shots, let's try that again. Cleared. 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 So the buffer clears, like it's ready to go again and again and again. And even if you did just want to ignore that. Like if you burst fire instead of holding your finger down. You could easily just burst fire if you wanted to. I've taken 700 shots there. So realistically, final message from me is that yes, you have to use the faster cards. And unfortunately, not every CF Express card is the same. You have to use fast CF Express cards. Otherwise, you're just not going to get the performance that you want and the consistent performance that you want. That's where other CF Express cards can let you down. There's only a few that can keep up with that performance. This obviously also brings up questions around high efficiency and high efficiency star and the quality loss. Obviously, everyone knows that lossless compressed is that highest quality. Now, I have seen things from Nikon that say that high efficiency star is imperceivable, like you can't see the differences in the change in the quality from lossless compressed to high efficiency star. And then when you get to high efficiency, you can see differences in the pitch quality loss. I will be doing a, a full video on this. I do have access to the raw files. I have software that can read the raw files. I've had that for a long time. So I, I'm going to make a separate video around lossless compressed versus high efficiency star versus high efficiency, dynamic range, noise performance, overall sharpness, all those types of things. And if we are in a situation where high efficiency star is as good as lossless compressed, then also all of these problems just disappear because the buffer with high efficiency star is massive. So I'm well aware that the actual format and people being confused around lossless compressed and high efficiency star is adding to that confusion as well. So I will do that in a separate video. Some of you may have saw that I had a post on Instagram about different memory cards. I didn't want to show you testing all the memory cards in this video because I just wanted to show you about buffers in this video. But if you saw that I had access to, first of all, a SanDisk. So when it comes to CF Express, 
SanDisk cards, you have to make sure that their write is 1,400 megabits per second at least. If it's not, you're going to be in that same situation where you just you don't have a fast enough CF Express card. So if it's a SanDisk with a write of 1,200 megabits per second, that's not fast enough. If you've got a tough Sony CF Express card that has a write of 1,480 megabits per second, they are great, highly recommend those. If you've got a Delkin Black, that's the best card I can find, not only for speed, but also for temperature. It's the best card I can find for temperature. It doesn't get hot, no matter what I do to it. I then tried Angel Birds. Now, I'm not gonna to comment too much on Angel Bird cards because the cards I was using gave me lower performance than I was expecting. So I'm going to try and see if I can reach out to Angelbird to, about that. But the, the Angelbird cards I was using weren't, um, weren't great. So I, I want to, but that's, you know, that could just be those memory cards. It could, it could have been something. So I really want to go back to that and test that again. So keep an eye out for those Angelbird tests. So overall, um, ProGrade Cobalt are, are, are great. Delkin Blacks are great. The Sony Tough cards, great. Sandisk, great as long as it's got that 1,400 megabits per second written on it. If not, then it's good, but not great. Lexars, okay. Their temperature is my biggest concern. They get really hot, so that's my, my biggest concern about their temperature, really. Um, and then XQD cards are not recommended, personally. That's my personal recommendation, not obviously Nikon's recommendation, but you can use XQD cards if you're a landscape photographer or you shoot like single frame. So the way I see this is there's two ways you can look at this. Either you look at it from the point of view that Nikon have used a purposefully small buffer and therefore if you're a photographer that uses older XQD cards, you can't get the best out of a Z9. That might be one way of looking at it. Or you look at it another way and you say that the Nikon Z9, Nikon relied on faster cards. And if you're buying a newer camera, there is an expectation that you also might want to upgrade your memory cards. And this kind of goes back to the point of what I spoke about in my first video, which is that to get the best out of the Z9, you do really need those faster cards. And the impression that I have is that they've really designed this for future CF Express cards. We are around the corner from even faster CF Express cards. There are other cards coming out next year that are going to be even faster again. So I don't think it is a problem. I think the only scenario where it is a problem is if you're using an XQD card. It, it's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to your scenario or your, or your shooting situation or just your mentality as to how you want to view the situation. It's, it's one of those situations. There's always going to be people on, on either side of the fence, right? Uh, I, everything I've showed you in this video is as open and as honest as, as the camera is right in front of me with different memory cards and so on. So um, if, if, if you still have any doubts or if there's anything that you're unsure about, um, then do ask questions in the comments below and I can confirm a couple of things if, if there's anything you're unsure about. But hopefully I've been as clear as possible to, to show you what you will get with this camera when you use it with different memory cards. So I hope this video has been useful. As I mentioned, if you have any questions, please do pop them in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. We also passed 30,000 subscribers just before the launch of the Z9. That was a little bit of a, a secret win for me. And I've been so incredibly amazed by all the support and the kind comments that you guys have left. So. It, it really means the world to me. So just thank you so much, guys. I'm going to continue making these videos. I've got so many on the way. And don't worry, I've not forgotten about the macro lenses. I've not forgotten about the 40 millimeter. There's, trust me, I'm just trying to do all of this on my own. And it's, there's only so much I can do. So I'm trying to get it all out there um, to make sure that you guys are happy with all the content that I'm making. So I'm trying. I'll get there eventually. Um, there's just so much to cover. So... Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Goodbye.